Welcome back, my Union friends, to the Battle of Stones River. Uh, for those of you that didn't see the first part, you should definitely take a look at it. It's also known as the Battle of Second Murfreesboro. Um, and basically what we're trying to do, guys, is keep the enemy from taking this location right here, this fort, uh, as well as these forts over here. We've got a lot of work to do in terms of uh, sending some men back and uh, essentially defending this area. I don't know how long it's going to take us to do it. I don't know if we're going to succeed, but we're sure as hell going to try. So first of all, I'm going to put this unit here. I'm going to put this unit right around here. We're going to take Spears, put him in the woods, and really just try to create a, a defensive barrier for the Rebels. Now, I was bringing Beatty down here to assist us because we still have left a few units um, kind of behind uh, behind where, we, where we're supposed to be because they're doing a really good job at actually keeping the enemy off our ass. Um, and I'm thinking if we can kill a few of these Confederates before they even reach the fort, that might be a good idea. But I'm also thinking that we might be overthinking things a little bit and it's probably time to send as many people up to the fort as possible. For those of you that saw my last battle in the Confederate campaign at Antietam, one of the biggest mistakes we did was keeping guys behind to try to kind of uh, harm the enemy as much as possible, and it just didn't really work out. So we're going to be moving all these guys over here. Um, unfortunately, I think Schultz is in a bit of trouble. I'm not sure there's much he can do. Walker's doing a great job at keeping the enemy here under control. Um, but I'm actually going to get him to move double quick, try to shoot Schultz or maybe even get uh, the 7th and the ninth here uh, and stop them from becoming a problem. Uh, and we also want to get these damn supply wagons out of here. I don't know why they're still... Come on. What the hell is wrong with you? Move faster, you idiots. So we're going to get Walker over here just so that the Confederacy uh, can't really take our supply wagons and also to maybe get Schultz back to base. I'm thinking that might not be such a bad idea. We're going to move these guys as well. Everybody's heading back to base except for the 42nd. Unfortunately, they're going to have to stay back as our sacrificial lambs uh, and, and basically stop the enemy from approaching. So here we go. We're already engaging the Mississippi boys. Um, with Walker's division, and I can see they're going straight for those supplies. So hopefully we'll get a flanking shot here. Even though we're in the woods, I still think a flanking shot will be pretty devastating. Maybe not. Wow. So flanking shots in the woods, oh, one Confederate dropped, uh, are not as powerful as I initially thought they would be. Let's take the 51st Michigan boys, put them right here. We're going to take the 2nd and the 5th. We're going to take uh, the 6th Indiana, put them over there. Uh, these guys over here in the 44th are going to go over yonder. And we'll slowly sort of, you know, place these guys where they should be. Um, I think Scribble, he's going to stay right here. Sc Scribner is going to stay right here. Got to understand, I'm trying to look at these names and play at the same time. Uh, put this guy over here as well. Basically stop any of the enemy from advancing. So as you can see, we've already got some Confederates moving up. I'm going to try to get Beatty over there as quickly as possible to stop the rest of them. But we're going to keep this line intact. I just don't want the enemy uh, getting flanking shots on us. That would be a problem. Walker is still here dealing with the 4th. And uh, Schultz, of course, has been left behind. Uh, there's no way he's going to be able to stop this attack. I will try to stop it myself, but it might be time to actually move Walker up. Yeah, we're already getting flanked. No, I think I'm going to try to see if he can fight his way out of the woods. Hell, I might even charge these guys just to get them out of my way. Give them one nice volley. And now we're charging. Let's go, boys. Show them a Union can do the same as the Confederacy with a charge. We go bayonets out. And if we do that, then obviously we can probably escape to a better location. Um, we have to hold both Nashville Pike west and east, and we still got a, the 25th over here fighting uh, with these Confederates. There's more approaching. There's no way we're going to save them. Um, the same is true for the 21st here. He's been dealing with a bunch of skirmishers. Let's see how that close combat is going. Come on, Walker. You've got more men here. You can do this, son. With that bayonet combat. That is vicious. Fortunately, Schultz is pretty much finished. I hope he can get all the way back over here. Speaking of which, I need to start setting those cannons up for the eventual arrival of the Confederates. So there we go. They're definitely trying to hit Beatty. Um, I'm thinking now we can probably take Price, put Price over here by the farm, take Haskell and put him over here by the woods. In fact, there's somebody already going to the woods, so I might just take Haskell and have him watch this area. Um, incredibly, the Kentucky Regiment is actually falling back, but they're going to keep charging us without a doubt. Let's get down here. Wow, that is still happening. Those guys are not quitting. Bayonets and rifle butts are smashing into men, and nothing can be done about it. Um, let's go ahead and take Beatty. Really, really fat brigade here. Uh, no offense, Beatty. I didn't mean it that way, I promise. 
Let's move our uh, our men over here, and I'm not even sure if we have too much artillery to work with, um, which is kind of un kind of disappointing. Um, that's one thing that we are lacking. We do have races artillery here, and we also have standards artillery, uh, but apparently, you know, we're supposed to stay in this area to sort of repel any incoming attacks. But I'm going to move race over here. Our standard over here, and I'm going to move race two right now. I'm going to keep them here just because he's getting some pretty good shots on those guys across the river. But overall, this is untenable. You know, eventually, BD's going to be overrun, and that's exactly what's happening. Uh, nonetheless, I'm going to try to get Haskell. They have to cross this nasty waterline uh, to be able to do anything. So I'm going to put Swallow and Haskell, what an unfortunate name, um, and try and see if I can stop them from crossing that river, or at least make it a little more difficult for them crossing that river. I also want to make sure these supply wagons are way over here. Starkweather, you're going to come over here too because Starkweather can wait in the woods and provide some covering fire. As for the rest of these guys, well, they're kind of on their own. And look at that, Walker actually had to run and he's coming back. I mean, actually, he's still charging. Um, it looks like the 7th ran, but Walker is refusing to surrender, refusing to give up in any way. Um, and he definitely wants to be a part of this fight. Well, who am I to stop him? We're going to go and keep him. There we go. We've got an artillery piece there. We've got Kurt Church's artillery here. Uh, which is going to help with the enemy attempting to cross over here if they do, if they do try. In fact, I'm going to try to hit Pagram with a shot. I think there's no reason. We're already out of cover anyway. We might as well go ahead and try to take out some of the enemy cavalry. Alright, we got a whole Nashville pack. There we go. Hit Pagram. And that shell shot is probably devastating as well. It looks like they might try to cross over here. Now let's just see what's going on here. I don't know why they demanded... That we keep a few units over here. I might just bring them over here to the, the main part of the battle. I don't see the enemy crossing this area. And if they do, I will, I will have learned a lesson. Um, we'll move Gross over here. And actually, we might put him over here by these buildings. But the 4th Tennessee is approaching. And yeah, we're definitely getting our rear flank. We're getting bombarded here by artillery. But I'm going to trust the judgment of our generals. And it looks like Walker's at least running in the right direction. That's definitely a start. But I want Miller to be aiming in the right direction. And we might even take Scribner here and put him in these woods as well. Make it a little harder for the enemy to get too close. And we'll send Walker over here to try to get some flanking shots on these men before the rest arrive. Oh my goodness, they're already here. Holy shit. Those Confederates set up really quickly. Alright, take these boys. They're not exactly in the best shape. And I'm going to take two of our cavalry units. Zahn and Otis. See if we can't assist in this close combat fight. If the enemy's going to try to get into close combat, we're going to respond, and we're going to respond in force. So we're actually going to charge with Minty. Still moving that guy into position. And the 21st can also probably move into position over here. Have the 21st rush. There we go. Nice, nice. Miller. All right, Miller, you done enough. You don't have to do anything more. Just get your ass back to the line. Minty's taking care of it, but he's taking some nasty shots there being flanked by the enemy. So I'm going to get Minty back quickly, quickly, quickly. And now, of course, we've got Scribner firing away, which is pretty awesome. I might even try to charge those guys with our cavalry, but I think I want to be a little careful. Just a little bit. Let's see what's going on in the north. Looks like some of these boys are already trying to make it across. Uh, the 60th Kentucky is definitely trying to make it across. We're going to send Haskell up there. Colonel James Fife is killed. Oh, well, he's just a colonel, right? I mean, come on. John Miller's wounded. Come on, boys. Just want to make sure that they're out of range so that they can't get a flanking shot on us. Thinking maybe we'll just go ahead and let them cross. But, no, we've got to make it a little difficult for them. Some of them might try to cross over here. I was worried about that. So I'm actually going to send BD over here uh, to watch that particular part of the battlefield. And let's see how it's going over here in the woods. Going pretty well. We're hitting these guys with some major amounts of artillery. But I do think that this artillery could be a little bit closer, like right there. Um, Loomis is in a decent location. We're not going to mess with him. But already you can see we're getting some major shots on the Confederacy. Now, Miller, what are we going to do with you, son? Well, you can go over here. So Miller can still assist. No, Scribner, don't attack. Just shoot, you damn fool. Let's get Mincy over here. Nicholas over here. 
and even share. We're going to try um, a charge. But first, I want to start getting flanking shots here on the enemy. Beautiful. Look at those rebels running. I mean, that's what we like to see in this battle. My goodness, the Tennessee boys have spotted us, and Scribner's routing. Not good. We're going to charge immediately. Going to charge immediately over here on the Tennessee with Minty and Nicholas, basically through the woods. Let them know we mean business. I don't know why the Montana boys decided this would be a good time to charge. I hope we can stop that. Get your asses back to the line, you freaking idiots. And I'm sorry, it might not be Montana. Somebody corrected me before. Uh, is, it, is it Missouri? I, I, you guys can correct me down, down below, but I felt really bad about screwing that up. Look at that. We've already routed one of their units completely. Uh, we're going to keep charging with Nicholas. I mean, at this point, why stop, right? We might as well keep up the fire and just try to really hurt this guy. Let's see what's going on in the north. So some of these guys are managing to break through. We want to go ahead and face them, but we will face them from the cover of the woods, of course. Make sure that race is firing at that area. And we've got Price over here shooting. We could bring Fife in even uh, to assist here. I think that's what I'm going to do. Come on, boys. Give them hell. There we go. Some flanking shots on the Florida boys. And uh, they are definitely not guys I'd want to mess with. We're not seeing a lot of action coming from this area. And even Gross has kind of been out of the fight for a while. But look at how beautifully that worked. We absolutely moved the Confederates out of this frontal assault line uh, near, the, uh, near the woods. So those charges with our cavalry absolutely made a difference, which is really good to hear. Now, we left some guys to defend this area over here. I haven't seen any Confederates coming that way, but you know how these Confederates can be. They pop out of nowhere, these damn rebels, and uh, we've got to be prepared for them. So there we go. Keep firing, Five. Keep firing Haskell. Of course, Haskell's going to start getting hit pretty hard with, uh, with counter fire here. I'm kind of wanting to move Starkweather forward, um, but maybe it's better to leave him here uh, just to prepare for a possible enemy assault. There we go. We're probably going to make the Tennessee boys run after that volley. Yep, beautiful. Now I want to focus on the Georgia boys, even though we've got these Kentucky guys behind us. Yeah, we can't have our rear flanked. That's just not good. Uh, so I am going to move Starkweather up on the line to assist. And look at that. The Florida boys are being flanked as well. But look at this massive amount of rebels charging again into the woods. They really don't like uh, us pushing them out of the woods. Uh, this is their territory, and, and they want to make sure we know. Okay, we've still got Minty, we've still got uh, Shearer. I believe we had one more cavalry unit. Yes, we do, Foreman. For some reason, it always makes me think of the George Foreman Grill. I know, don't judge. Delicious George George Foreman Grill. Um, so there we go. We've actually routed an entire Confederate unit, not coming back to the battle. And I'm going to get Starkweather over here to see if I can get some flanking shots on the enemy. I'm just going to move past. I don't want them to start firing yet, but it looks like they may go ahead and take this time to fire. Fair enough. Uh, Price, no, you idiot, you stay here. And actually, I probably made that mistake. But these poor Florida guys are getting just blasted. There's really not much they can do at this point. Um, just absolutely annihilating them. There we go. Send the Georgia boys across the river. We're going to fire on the Alabama men. In this battle, we're not necessarily going to fire at fleeing men. As long as they get the hell out of here, I'm happy. Come on, Starkweather. Yes. Fife, move forward. As you can see, there is a little dip here, so we do have a slight uphill advantage with guys like Fife. Uh, it's not too significant, but it's enough to make a difference. So Haskell, once again, I need him focusing here on the Tennessee boys. I don't like the way that he's set up. I want him, like, totally facing the enemy. I may, maybe I should send one of our generals over here to survey this battle, but... I think right now I'm, I'm playing it kind of cool and just uh, letting them do as they please. What I'm really concerned about, of course, is the Confederate attack through the woods here that seems to never end. It might be time to bring Gross over here. We got Hardy over here, one of the main Confederate generals, and we're probably going to have to uh, re respond to him quite soon. For now, though, we're just going to focus on attacking the enemy. Now, how could I not have noticed this? We've got freaking enemy artillery firing at us way out in the open. We're going to run them down. We're not allowing that to occur. And with Minty and Foreman, I might try another one of our glorious wood charges. Seems to have really caused a lot of chaos before. So let's see if we can't make that, if we can't recreate that chaos. And there we go. We're also, we've also got some skirmishers here. Hell, I'll charge them too. If y'all want to die, I've got no problem bringing you there. Now, unfortunately, we lost one of our cavalry brigades. 
in that charge a few guys retreating from battle but we also got them to lose one of their skirmisher brigades um, and we definitely want to keep hitting the artillery here let's grab Minty I'm gonna charge into the Alabama boys come on get them nasty flanking shots on Minty I probably should have considered that but we all make mistakes Look at the north. We've got so many different things to focus on here in this battle, but look at that. I'm sure the rebels are not going to try to cross this area at all anymore. We have taught them that this area is not a place they want to be. Um, and I'm thinking of even moving Hazen back because they're not really doing much over here, just waiting for the enemy. I mean, I'm going to hate myself later because I'm sure the enemy is going to try to cross this area. And Robert Minty's wounded, not Minty. Oh, poor Minty. At least we sent those Confederates reeling. They're not going to be back for the battle. We're going to send these guys over here, and I might even send Scribner to try to take out their Artie, but I think Zom can probably deal with that. So let's send Zom on another charge. And Minty's okay, even though he's wounded. Grab Sherer and Foreman. We're bringing them all over here to deal with some enemy skirmishers and enemy artillery. Get behind the enemy units so that they have no artillery support. And these guys are holding out in the woods really, really well. Um, I might even take one of these bigger brigades that's approaching now, like Hazen, and put him in the woods over here. In fact, I'm going to do that right now with Walker because getting some flanking shots on these guys is going to be fairly easy. All right, fire, fire on the Tennessee boys. Clearly, they, they have no interest in helping us out, although we did destroy those cannons. They're not going to be an issue anymore. Take Sher and Foreman, and I'm going to send them over here to try and hit the rest of the enemy artillery. Of course, Scribner is going to be kind of left out in the cold. There's not too much we can do for him, unfortunately. All right, Walker's approaching fire beautiful look at that smashing through the arkansas boys they're not going to stick around for much longer i can promise you that uh this is more or less uh an end to the battle for them I just don't see that happening come on go for the artillery yes we're going to take some hits from their infantry but we're also going to take their focus away from where it should be and even Hardy, he's right up there. Gross is still back here. I'm going to leave Cruft right here because I don't know if the enemy's going to try to cross. But I love those flanking shots. That's looking great. Look at that. Get them, boys. Routed one of the artillery bits. We're going to try to route the second one. But it looks like one of the infantry units is going to try to charge here. Oh, boy. Yeah, unfortunately, Minty finally took off, and I can't blame him. We were getting a little risky there trying to take out enemy artillery, so I'm going to move these guys uh, back to the woods. New Year's is final. Okay, Battle of Stones River Part 3, I guess. We managed to survive the vicious rebel attack and now stand strong on defensive ground. On January 1st, 1863, both armies rested and took care of their wounded soldiers. Bragg's army surrounds us, expecting that we will become afraid of another attack and withdraw. We fear nothing. We will stand and fight to the last man. Here we will celebrate the new year with the first big victory for the Union in Tennessee. So guys, we did really well on that initial part of the battle. Now, of course, we've got Part 2. General Nashville Pike must be held at all costs if we want to claim victory today. Bragg knows that in the next days we will receive strong reinforcements and maybe is anxious to attack us before they arrive. Okay, so we have trenches covering the whole surrounding area. That's awesome. Um, so we are well protected. And yesterday we extended the left flank on the field of the opposite side of the river in order to observe enemy movements. Watch for rebels. They could attempt to attack us here. So we are going to keep some guys back here. But for the most part, we're focusing on this area. And we expect the Confederates to attack from the southwest and probably the southeast as well. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, I expected that. And uh, from over here as well and southeast. Damn. So we've got a lot of Confederate attacks to concern ourselves with. Most of these boys are already in the trenches. But we'll go ahead and put some more men in the trenches over here just to make sure that we've covered our ass in every possible way. Uh, and we're basically awaiting a major Confederate assault. We'll start reassigning troops when we need to. Um, not so sure I trust the developers with this position right here. I kind of feel like moving those guys back um, and not worrying about that attack, just letting them try to cross the river. Because remember, all we need to defend are these two areas, which to me seems like uh, maybe something that... Uh, 
that we could do without having to stop their attack over there in the uh, the southeast. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed episode two. Episode three will be coming very, very soon, and hopefully it'll be the last episode of the Battle of Stones River. I'm absolutely loving this battle, and I think I'm doing an okay job. Of course, all the bodies have been buried, but we definitely put a hurting on the rebels. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care, and have an awesome, awesome day.